One would be hard pressed to remember a time when an entertainment company has had such a bad week. Sure, we've seen companies go under, but the absolute amazing torrent of negative stories coming out about Disney that are not insignificant whatsoever, but huge, hugely negative stories. One after the other, day after day, it just continues to rain on the parade of the Walt Disney Company. I cannot remember a week like this, and today we're going to examine the entire recap of everything that happened over the last eight days. Folks, you may not believe all the contents in terms of what has come crashing down on the House of Mouse. Alright folks, welcome back to more excellence right here on the WDW Pro Channel. It's all we know how to produce the detractors. They cannot stand it. It just annoys them to no end. Off to Twitter they go. But here we go again, telling the truth as always. And Lorena Creole is with us as well as Steve from Floral from Under a Rock. Welcome to you both. Thank you Glad much. to be here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Disney won't like this, but you might. And if you do, click that like button, share, subscribe. When you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. And here we go. Off to the races. Let me just clue in the audience and both of you as to the last eight days for Disney, because this is hard to grapple with mentally. I mean, it really is to consider that a company has had these sorts of headlines. But here's we're going to go through all of the headlines, the major headlines that Disney has had, not including Ike Perlmutter and uh, Nelson Peltz joining forces to take down Bob Iger because I think that actually could be a positive thing. So we'll leave that out, but let's just, let's go through the rundown okay. and this, this will absolutely throttle you folks if you've not been paying close attention. Here's what happened to Disney in the last eight days. Number one, the Ahsoka finale flopped on the Nielsen charts. How badly did it do? Well, it came in under Andor. Then we got the, the ratings for Loki season two with its opener. Mm -hmm. opener. And it's down 39% compared to season one of Loki at a time when there were far fewer subscribers on Disney+. Plus. And guess what that means? It means that, remember how the Ahsoka finale flopped? Well, the, the Loki season two opener was beaten soundly by Ahsoka. The Marvels, by the way, is on track for a worse <laughs> opening than The Flash. And Wish is on track to open $5 million less than The Marvels despite the fact that the mainstream media seems to think that that's a win for Wish. We'll talk about that in the forthcoming days. South Park also took down Kathleen Kennedy and lit the internet ablaze as they made fun of everything that's been going on in the haze of Disney. Gina Carano then followed that up by unloading on Lucasfilm and telling all of the stuff they've been up to. And wouldn't you know it, Pablo Adalgo over there, a member of the Lucasfilm story group, he responded to Gina Carano and in doing so seemed to suggest that Lucasfilm politics are his politics. It also was leaked that Gina Carano may have a treasure trove of emails linking Kathleen Kennedy, Pablo Hidalgo, and the story group to bad behavior. The very first attempt at integrating Disney Plus's most popular show, Bluey, into the theme parks had to be ceremoniously pulled for an unknown reason after a single day, but it was probably due to the fine print inside a contract, and maybe Bluey is off limits for theme parks. We don't know yet. The Variety article came out and revealed that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has no plan B if they have to change plans due to the uh, Kang the Conqueror situation. The Luminous soundtrack was revealed for Epcot, and it has fallen flat. Fans are disappointed and angry that, yes, it's following the harmonious plan of being a karaoke Disney song melody sing-along. Disney also released a press release claiming that they'll pay less for Hulu than their contractually obligated minimum, without mentioning that that contractually obligated minimum must be paid, and therefore the press release is a bunch of bunk. And finally, folks, if you've not had enough bad Disney yet, over at the Magic Kingdom, the Jungle Cruise is literally falling apart. And all of that has been in eight days. Eight days. Wonderful. Lorena? <laughs> Lorena, wow. how, how did this company get to this point? How is it even possible? You know, it, it's, it's possible for several reasons but the main reason is just the sheer hubris that disney can do no wrong that the company can't do any wrong that the company is it possible that the company is possibly going in the wrong direction and disney cannot truly acknowledge that 
for whatever reason. And with Disney being that oblivious, it is costing them and it keeps costing them and keeps costing them. And it's like a snowball going downhill. Eventually it turns into a big, super huge boulder. And then eventually you got an avalanche going on. That's what's going on at Disney. And it's what happens when a company isn't paying attention to the warning signs that are going on. It's amazing how far they, they've fallen and how fast it happened. I mean, you think about Marvel. Marvel was uh, untouchable. They, they could not make a mistake all the way up until 2019. And then it's, it, I, I've made this uh, analogy. It feels like watching an NBA all-star who could do, who, who could not miss a shot suddenly mm -hmm. is taking granny shots at the free throw line and making air balls. And you just, you, you, you can't understand how Steve, uh, which it feels a little funny calling you, Steve. I'm so, I'm so used to calling you floral now, so uh, Steve, it is your, it is your real name, supposedly, allegedly, it but, is. uh, Steve, this is, uh, this is unsustainable. I would say for any company. And there are those out there who claim that we're just here to be negative about Disney. You know, we're a channel that just wants to harangue this, this uh, house of mouse. But these have been the biggest headlines of, of the last eight days for Disney. How in the world is this something that a company can continue to do without serious consequence? Well, um, as Lorena was talking, my, my thought that was going through my brain was that... Uh, if, if you had a thought that went anywhere other than your brain, you let us know. I'll call the papers. <laughs> deal. Deal. Uh, Disney, the overall uh, business, is in the same state as the parks so uh, i mean i've never actually been to the disney parks but based on what everyone has told me both friends that have actually physically gone that are not connected to our sphere who had a great time and then also you guys do all the reporting so I'd like the the, the list kind of goes like this it's underfunded it's not up to the standards that it used to be um there's a bunch of shabby uh boards advertising things that are not coming or uh, have either fallen back flat or are way behind schedule. And it's just very disorganized and everything's starting to look really shabby. And so uh, my, my thinking is that uh, ultimately uh, Disney has decided to lose their minds because they're so stressed out about the way things are going. I don't think there's actually any plan anywhere, even outside of Marvel, and uh, they're just so overwhelmed with everything. And that's why guys like Nelson Peltz, like this is going to go through fairly quick, I'm assuming. Now, I get most of my guesses wrong on this show. I will totally admit that. <laughs> um, but, guess the opposite then, Steve. Guess the opposite. Say it'll yeah, take forever. So Nelson Peltz, he's going to tank and everything's going to work out perfectly for <laughs> Bob Iger uh, this coming Wednesday. And uh, honestly, like it's, it's very interesting to watch there's a lot of leadership lessons here for people to learn from i'm telling you they, they need to put this in the history books i mean honestly if the, in in business classes to come the past three years of disney should be taught and not in a good way no absolutely not and uh because they're, they're not listening to their customers and their customers regardless of what people are saying online the wallets are not following the product and that's across the board, whether it's merchandise, whether it's the parks, whether it's the movies. So the customers, they aren't feeling seen. They're not feeling heard. And uh, thus, Disney's products are not being seen and are not being heard. One of the things that's amazing to me is that this is a company that has lost something like approximately 60% of its value over the last two years. And yet this is also a company which does not seem interested in taking a lesson from that and modifying its behavior. Now, every successful business I know responds to consumers and, and responds to the marketplace. And Disney does not. And so I'm not here to tell folks that Disney is going to go bankrupt, but I am here to tell you that I think the leadership of Sears was probably uh, more intelligent than the folks who are leading mm. Disney right now. But uh, I, you know, Sears went under. I don't think that Disney will, because I think that people like Nelson Peltz and others will step in and, and uh, have an impact. But let's just walk back through again. Some of those headlines, and let's just explain the the uh, degree to which these matter. I mean, these are not small situations. Like we're not pulling out little stuff. Like there was a piece of gum stuck on under a bench near Carousel of Progress. No, okay, <laughs> listen to this. The Ahsoka finale flops. Why does that matter? Well, that matters because they're trying to use Ahsoka 
as a launching pad for the Thrawn saga, which has a theatrical release. And so all of that is tied into hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that flopped right off the bat. So, and on top of that, they're trying to use that as almost like a benchmark for where things need to go. Sure. Absolutely. And, and they're, you know, they're, they're a creative executive at Lucasfilm was over the whole thing. He's the sole writer. So what's that say about the abilities? Okay. Then the Loki season two opened below Ahsoka. So that tells you that both of the, the top franchises that Disney owns are in a very critically sick state, right? Both Star mm -hmm. Wars and Marvel. Then on top of that, of course, the Marvel's on track to do worse than the Flash. Well, why does that matter? Well, it matters because due to the Hollywood strike, this may be the last Marvel film for a year. So we could be going 12 months with that being the last thing that they ever did was an absolute pile drive uh, face to concrete. Then we've got Wish, which Disney desperately needs to succeed. Their animated film, of course, they are on a string of animated losses, elemental loss, money at the box office. People forget about that. Wish now on track to do the same. And then, oh my gosh, the whole stuff with South Park and Gina Carano and Lucasfilm. I mean, the stuff that's being alleged here that they, that, you know, <laughs> that Lucasfilm may have actually, and we don't know this to be true, but there are allegations right now that there may be evidence that, di that Lucasfilm was manipulating the media and manipulating companies such as Google to try to take down stuff that was critical of them. I mean, these are some of the allegations that are being made. And, and that's just, we didn't even go through half the list of the stuff that matters. And okay, take this for example. You might say, oh, come on, pro, that Luminous thing, that, that was a little thing, right? I mean, who cares about the songs in Luminous? When you add in the cost of Harmonious, which was the show that Disney had to build and then destroy, Mm -hmm. And then they tried to replace it with Luminous, and then that was so bad that they redid the soundtrack. And now we're getting the new soundtrack, and it's so bad. They spent, we're, we're adding this up, folks. We think they spent something like $250 million over the last 18 months to get an evening fireworks show for Epcot. $250 million. $100 million for Harmonious, the money t uh, used to take it down, then the money used to build Luminous, then to redo Luminous. You add it all up. We think there's somewhere between a quarter of a billion dollars on this. Mm -hmm. What's the goal? To get people to stay at a theme park to eat dinner. Have they succeeded? It doesn't seem like it. So no, all of these matter. Pro, pro, I'll just add, Harmonious was so bad that the post-show of Harmonious people hung around for it because the music was good, the visuals were good, and people didn't know what the heck was going on. So you've got a fireworks show they spent millions of dollars on, destroyed the sight lines in Epcot for, and people thought the post show of that was better. Actually, people really thought that the LED light show on Spaceship Earth was better than Harmonious. And it is. It absolutely oh, yeah. is. Uh, Lorraine, do you remember how long the wand stayed on, the, uh, on Spaceship Earth? Back around mm -hmm. the, uh, the, you know, the 2000 mark, that yeah. thing stayed on there forever and people hated it. And still Disney left it up there because it cost money to take it down. So the fact that they destroyed Harmonious in one year really tells you that like people hated that thing. I mean, so oh my gosh, <laughs> to build I something that costs that much and destroy it in a year because it's, it's killing your, your theme park traffic. Oh my God. Gosh. I have never heard so many people complain about a show on the first night than when I saw Harmonious. The first Listen, night. It, it lasted less time than Stitch's Great Escape, and that's really saying something. I mean, that's a ride where they barfed chili dog smells in your face, and uh, oh. it stuck around longer. So. Um, but eight days, that's, uh, that's it. And, you know, my position here, of course, is that I'm not here to be negative about Disney. I'm here to just report the news. And I can't help it that Disney is in this spiral. But for the heavy dosage pixie dusters out there, if you don't realize that when a company loses 60% of its value approximately, and when there's you know a second proxy war likely on the horizon now, and when you have all of these failures, listen, when you lose 60% of your value, you should be at the bottom of the barrel. Like there should be a turnaround. And then we get this last eight days and it's like, this isn't a turnaround. Can this I just, is like we thought they were in free fall and they managed to go faster, Steve. I was just going to say, it's it's not just 60% of their value. 
when we follow the stats, they've actually lost about 60% of their customers. So it's not just yeah, like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, because all of their sales have tanked, right? So literally, it's not just a value thing. It's a overall, everything has lost 60%. Well, it's been a tremendous week, not in a good way for Disney. We wish them the best, but we only wish them the best if they, if they do the things that get them, that gets their company on the right track. But because here, we don't want them to double down on being dumb. And and here's the thing, though. Just and I mean to kind of give everybody credit here. Like Lorena is probably one of the people that is fighting so hard for Disney to to win and tries to be as positive positive as she can, and uh, uh, and, and just is annoyed with the overall atmosphere of everyone being hyper negative. You have been talking hyper positively about Loki, all things considered. And uh, well, so, I mean, we've given it fives and sixes, and there was one episode that got an eight, but that's I'm gonna that's say that's better hyper, than bad, that's, that's hyper positive right now. Um, <laughs> but, but like, and then, we too, though, we like, won't with, talk about the most recent episode because it didn't go so well, <laughs> no. But Wish, like, I remember when we all saw Wish, uh, that trailer come out, uh, Jonas was pumped. I, my ear, my, I was kind of perked. I'm like, maybe. Uh, and I remember Lorena was really excited about it, and I know that you were a little bit optimistic. Well, the there were people time, saying we that, there like, were people talking about how it was going to tank, and I said, "Whoa, whoa, now wait a minute!" Because you know we go through the list of everything that's going to tank, and, and, and then we would get to Wish, and people would include it. I'd say, "Whoa, now wait a minute! Yeah, we don't include Wish because it might actually succeed." And and so we were so in different ways. All of us have been hopeful. Um, I've probably been the most cynical, to be fair, but. Uh, uh, at the same time, like with Wish, I, I was I want to see a movie with my kids that we can enjoy together. Like especially my girls, like they want to mm-hmm. go to a movie and watch a princess movie. They've only seen like Sonic and Mario and these kinds of things, right? So they want a princess movie, not Paw Patrol or something. So I'm like I'm really wanting that to be good, but at the same time though, the 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 things that are slowly leaking out about this thing and what we've seen in trailers, I'm just kind of like. Eh. Like, <laughs> and Steve, think, that's uh, because they can't stop. They won't stop this thing that they've been doing, which is to substitute out meritocracy and excellent product with empty virtues. And it's not like they're, they're unearned virtues. All they do is they <laughs> praise their own selves and give them their own selves awards, but they don't produce anything that is fantastic anymore. But with Wish, like all that goes, keeps going through my mind is Wonder Woman 1984 will have probably have done it better, the overall story. And I hope it's good, you know? But like, I'll review it. I, I'm hopeful. I want it to be good. I, and like, I do too. Come on, Disney. <laughs> Don't give me wrong. something I, to praise I, you for. I want it to be good because for purely selfish reasons, I will say this. <laughs> um wish with the setting that it's in you know that it's in southern spain that's where part of my family's heritage is from all of it including you know the way that asha looks i'm like okay you guys got the setting right for this this could be really good but if i put wishes trailer up against the trailers say well let's reach way back beauty and the beast animated little mermaid animated um even man, why, why, even, even tangled even tangled and even um enchanted enchanted and that and was tangled live action are some of my two favorite movies <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i i mean they, they were great you saw the trailers and you're like oh it's wonderful and you watched the movie and you enjoyed watching the movie and it's like I, I'm hopeful, but at the same time, I'm not getting those feels that you get from those animated films, which is sad because Disney used to knock it out of the park with every single princess movie trailer. It was just like, shut up and take my money. It was like printing money at you know at the Disney store. All the little girls wanted, didn't matter how many princess costumes you made, they wanted everything. They wanted all of it. And I want this to do well, but I just, I don't know. You mentioned Enchanted, and this is what used to be so magical about Disney. It was a quality thing. And the, the 
quality aspect was that in Enchanted, they had uh, the happy working song. And yes. that's that's one of the funniest songs I think that was ever <laughs> written into a uh, into a movie. I love True. it, and it's not something that was heavily marketed. You went in the movie and then you saw that, and you just had to be floored by the creativity. And but, but the that's dance what's missing number, now. we don't with, expect that anymore. Like, but even in that song, like bringing that charm into the real world with how does he know? Right, like yes, and everyone's and, and that's where I think you you saw it in the movie. Right. And because and that Disney charm, that flair was all done live action dancers. And you're just like, this is Disney 100%. This is and, what I've and come Now everything about. is cynical. Everything yeah. is cynical and yeah. everything is identitarian. Because now it would be like, if, I mean, they just did Disenchanted. So we know that some, for, there's some people hanging that on to, was and that was. Awful. Yeah, it wasn't very good. Like, but like, but it had, it had some elements of it's like, like there, you could tell people were trying. Like there was like some yeah. in the background because my family actually enjoyed it, right? Overall. But that's probably in light of everything else that was been out. So, but like, like, what was I trying to say? The, if you say you liked Haunted Mansion, we're gonna have we're gonna have it no, out right I, here. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Um, I did, and I liked it. But it's I like know it. you and Michelle both. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, there's those those pushes that used to be there, and they're just not. And and we're we want these things to be good. All of us do. The reason why we're enjoying the overall tanking of these companies as they make these modernized pushes is because. We've said for the last five, six years, literally, this isn't going to work. You're going to lose your customers. And now it's this is the comeuppance. We're being like, like everything right now is just proving us right. And Steve, and that's why the access and mainstream media and the official journalists and the Hollywood types cannot admit it is because they are suffering through massive cognitive dissonance because if they admit that we were right, that means they were wrong and that means they don't know how the world works the way that we do and they can't stand it. And that's why we're just the type of people to handle cues from you, questions from members of the channel. How you like that <laughs> segue? segue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to hand it to the panel to answer these. Vic Saris asks, and this seems like it's right up Lorena's alley, Okay. Given the Jungle Cruise situation, should we presume all rides are in similar neglect or that this is this incident might finally push repairs? Things like Aerosmith, uh, Rock and Roller Coaster, break multiple times a day. What do you think, Lorena? Is Jungle Cruise a special exception or are all the attractions suffering? I don't want to bring up Carousel Progress uh, having another animatronic lose its hand recently. It's inclusion. Compared it's inclusion. to most of the other attractions, Carousel of Progress is scarily doing uh rather well um the thing that's happening with jungle cruise seems to be the norm rather than the exception i can't tell you how many times i've gone to the parks when it opened pirates of the caribbean isn't running um tower terror isn't uh isn't running with tron they finally got that sucker opened and all the gorgeous cyan you know, lighting that's in the tunnel and, you know, and all of that, that's gone. Something happened to that. They had to go and, uh, they had to go and, uh, go and rip it out. Lorena, did you offer to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get them some uh, blue LEDs? No. I could fix it. I mean, <laughs> uh, tape and some blue LEDs. We can make that thing. We can, we can bring that sucker back. <laughs> it's just, I, I just could not believe it hadn't been open that long. And well, the queue has nothing in it, and then they go and they go and do that. But yeah, unfortunately, Pixar's that is the norm rather than the exception. And I personally think it's because a lot of the knowledge about that repair and how to keep those rides operating is not there like it uh, like it used to be. And it's sad considering how expensive it is to visit these parks now. It's honestly a funding issue. They have funneled so much of the money that Walt Disney World makes into Shanghai now, and we 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 know this. Uh, but they have funneled so much of the investment money into the international parks, and Walt Disney World, as a result, has fallen into disrepair. There is an upkeep 
amount that needs to be paid regularly to keep these attractions functioning the way they should, that hasn't been happening. Olaf Van S says, I read a Facebook article earlier describing the difference in how boys play with toys and girls, which was a study from Lego, as we boys like to become the toy we play with while girls want to change the toy to resemble them. I do believe we experience this also with current day entertainment where women are in charge. Now, uh, to summarize that succinctly, and then Flora, I'm interested in your take on this because you actually puppeteer as uh, your, your claim to fame on YouTube. So this is right up uh, what, what you do. But uh, to summarize it succinctly, boys play in third person, girls play in first person. Now that, that is not a statement of concrete fact for every individual. It's a statement of proclivities within the uh, sexual differences, right? The biological differences in the way that we're wired. There's, you know, there's a spectrum, of course, in terms of some boys are more into uh, playing in third person or first person and some girls. But as a whole, and this is what Lego and others have found, and there's a whole history of psychoanalysis uh, that goes back 50, 60 years into this, but girls tend to play in first person. They tend to change the character into being them and they role play that out and boys tend to play it as if they are watching over the character and, and playing a uh, sort of a video game or a script. So, Steve, your thoughts on uh, how that might impact toy manufacturers, but then also do you think that's impacting the industry the way that women might run studios and might run uh, creative decisions? I think that... There's no danger here, Steve. Yeah. Go ahead and answer no, it however know. you'd I, like. I, no, 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 yeah. totally. Uh, there's nobody I, I, watching this video. I, I, Definitely no women will come for you. No, no. Uh, I think that if you have the right safeguards and you have a good team, you're safe. I think that if you if you don't have a good team, you'll become uh, a victim to your own way of thinking. And I, I think that just applies across the board. So whether you're... More doing, minds make better decisions, you say? Not necessarily. It's having uh, broad thinking minds. Right, because oh. three people can be as effective as a group of twenty if you have a group of three smart people who really are trying to think and they're willing to be wrong. And uh, if you have the have humility and you're willing to be wrong, I think you're going to be okay. Um, and I think right now, because everyone, because of all the the DEI pushes, no one can afford to be wrong. And ironically, that's what they can't afford. So there's there's no humility. So I think that uh, like from everything that we've heard down the grapevine from Kathleen Kennedy and, and all of them, like it's just more of an agenda. It's not that uh, she wanted to change the characters into what she wanted. She just wanted to kill those characters, right? So I don't think that there's so much that, but. I do know when I watch my kids, uh, when they understand who a character is, they want to become that character. Uh, and uh, like, like specifically my son, my girls, they will try to become that character, but they will make that character do what they want them to do. And there's so, nothing wrong with that. No, exactly. And so like my son, like he'll run her. I mean, he's two, so it's a little harder to comment on that, but he sees Hulk and he's just like, Hulk smash. And he just like runs up and smashes everything. And I think Hulk is his favorite right now. But, uh, uh, but with the girls, uh, Batman, they like Bruce Wayne. They, they hate, they hate Batman because Bruce Wayne, you can dress up Batman. <laughs> okay. I, I, I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> you know Let's what? As long as we have agreement here, we better stop while we can. So let's <laughs> let's leave it there. I think everybody out there gets it. Uh, and we will, that's right. We'll walk away from that uh, minefield and, and be happy about it. All right. This next one is uh, addressed to me specifically, so I'll give my thoughts on this one. Space Dave 2000 asks, do you feel the six-month-ago you versus the today you has changed in regards to how you view Disney? Uh, hopeful to severely upset. I've noticed a shift in positive hope to stand Disney is outright nuts. With that thought in mind, is there a breaking point where you say, no more, I refuse to attend or support Disney at all? Space Dave, my answer to this is that corporations are made up of many, many, many people. And the leadership at Disney has changed. So we had the uh, removal of Bob Chapek. We had uh, the strategies of Jeff Morrell thrown away. Bob Iger is back. Susan Arnold is gone. Uh, the former CEO of Nike is at the head of the board and has significant connections to China. And so what you're watching me respond to is the different 
members of the team now. And that's not to say I was, you know, utterly positive about Bob Chapek. There's plenty I didn't like about what he did. I did not like uh, showing the the show buildings and the theme parks and ruining the sight lines, but that that's dramatically smaller than things that I'm disappointed with right now. But I also know that this is a team that can change again. And so with Nelson Peltz and uh, Pearl Mutter and the Triang Group coming together, we may see the next CEO be someone who goes back to common sense and brings this company back into moderation in the middle. And so we await to see what happens there. I also know that the market has a funny way of forcing companies to either do the right thing or to go extinct. I don't think Disney will go extinct. And so we'll watch and see what happens. Now we've got some more uh, cues from here, uh, cues from you. We'll answer these as well. Vic Sarah says on November the 8th, what is the biggest one or what is the one biggest piece of data you're looking forward to getting or hoping to hear? Uh, Lorena, Steve, do either of you have a, have a thought on that one? I, I've got an answer, but just in case you might oh, have yeah. something you're wanting to hear in the earnings call, what do you think? Uh, November the 8th, I want to hear what's going on with my dividend. Am I going to get <laughs> paid it retroactively? You're going to get a half From chance. when the uh, dividend uh, was taken away? That's no, number no, no, one no, no, thing no. that I no, want to no, hear no. about. <laughs> There's course, no Spelt way. Of course, is probably like, yeah, where's my money, too? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, Steve, what I, are you looking forward to on that one? <laughs> um, on my end, uh, I am very excited to be listening to you and, and Valiant. <laughs> <laughs> just That's when, the right like, answer. Uh, that's the right answer it just it's like gets every getting super excited and uh, <laughs> that's 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 honestly because i'll be driving a school bus while i listen so i'm like the only problem is folks good. there's no students and he isn't driving a bus for a school he just owns a school bus but <laughs> there you go yeah traveling across alberta no telling where he'll land um so ladies and gentlemen i'll say uh, on november the 8th there is so much to hear there is so much but there is an opportunity for Bob Iger to step in it again and make a claim regarding uh, Walt Disney World, the Reedy Creek Improvement District. That is what I'm probably most looking forward to because he's made that mistake twice. It has cost the company dearly. We'll see if he does it again. It never gets covered by the mainstream because it's so painful to them. But, I mean, there's a trillion dollar price tag attached to that you know, what could happen with Disney World. So we'll listen into that and see what happens. But Disney Plus subscriber numbers for North America, very interested in that. Uh, you know, we'll stop there. There's there's plenty to be uh, interested in. Slade Wilson says, uh, do you think that South Park episode will be brought up on the earnings call? If so, how do you think I will handle it? I'm sure the PR people who are, are anticipating it being asked. Slade, I don't think they'll ask it in this one because this involves uh, institutional investors and banking companies getting to make those phone calls. However, when they have the open line to all investors, which will be uh, in 2024, well, it just might. And I also wouldn't be surprised if you hear the name Valiant Renegade perhaps come up. And wouldn't that be something? Uh, Cousin Dwight, 950, us old school, hardcore Disney fans often say Walt would not approve with modern Disney. While I firmly believe this statement to be true, today's technology may empower us to obtain a mostly unbiased assessment. Should an enterprising, tech-savvy individual create a Walt Disney chatbot using the wealth of excellent biographies and open source materials to train the machine? It would be beneficial to have an AI machine capable of providing us with a mostly unbiased opinion, acknowledging that there will always be some bias due to its training with human-sourced information. Uh, Cousin Dwight, that is a forward-thinking idea of creating a Walt Disney chatbot where all of Walt's communications are used to create its uh, its thinking and its analysis, and we would really find out what Walt thinks. Unfortunately, I do think there's something special in, inside each one of us that uh, cannot be fully replicated by artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence seems to me to be uh, deterministic, and I'm not sure that we totally are. That's a deeper philosophical question for another day. But I will say that when it comes to Walt and how he would handle certain things, Walt grew the company. Bobby's not. Either of you have a thought on this uh, very deep sci-fi question? Ooh. Um, I would absolutely <laughs> love getting all the Walt's knowledge into You want a Walt AI. chatbot, Lorena? I, I, I do want a Walt <laughs> chatbot. I do. 
My it would be a lot, would be a lot of fun. Can we get, you know, it would be, be interesting to know, are we getting the public version of Walt or the private version of Walt? Although I'm not sure this, it's, it's hugely different according to people that, that uh, you know, knew him best. He was uh, quite the same and very, very, very driven. The funny thing about Walt is that he bet the farm over and over and he won. And most people never bet the farm. You know, no, most people never bet everything. They never go all in. Uh, you know, it's like in poker, you go all in and it's a big deal. But when it's your entire life, and he did that multiple times, and he won. So Real quick, Steve, uh, Cousin <laughs> Dwight said, maybe too late, Don't want to t uh, blah, 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 talks about the uh, Twitter files. Answer is yes. So now let's go to Steve. Steve, where can we find you? Floor from Under a Rock on Sundays. I do Church Under a Rock. So if you want to do some church from 9.15 to 10.15 uh, Eastern time, uh, feel free to come and hang out. And then uh, Wednesdays, 9 to 10 Eastern, we got our, our main show, and that's where we goof off and mess around and make fun of everybody and everything. All so, right, Steve, go save the kid. All right, thank you save so much. Save the kid, Steve. I love you all. <laughs> all right, Lorena, tell us where we can find you on this great, big, beautiful web out there. Well, folks, you can find me on uh, Instagram. You can find me on the Twix, Twitter, X, Twix. You can find me there. And, of course, you can find me on YouTube for various live streams and videos for spicy pop culture and sci-fi analysis. And, of course, I always keep it real when it comes to the marks. All right, folks, make sure you find these wonderful contributors by clicking on the link to their content in the video description down below. What a fun time we've had today, even though it's been at the expense of Disney. We're not here to rain on Disney every single day, folks, but go through that list, see if we got anything wrong. And if we did, drop a comment down below and tell us. So we would love to know and be correct once more. And you might be just the one to tell us that. Or if you think we're right on all of it, well, we'll take a little bit of praising as well. Like, share, subscribe, and when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. And don't forget, later this month, we have a huge announcement regarding thatparkplace.com. We plan to turn that website into the premier pop culture website on the web. And I promise you we've got an announcement that just might make you believe it's so. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Ah, floral. It's time for you to walk the plank. What? Why? Because... You, you haven't subscribed to WDW Pro yet. Nor bookmark that parkplace.com on your web browser to get great articles from great contributors. What?